Tranio, since for the great desire I had to see fair Padua, nursery of arts, I am arrived for fruitful Lombardy, the pleasant garden of great Italy. And by my father's love and leave, am armed with his good will and thy good company. My trusty servant, well approved in all, here let us breathe and haply institute a course of learning and ingenious studies. Pisa, renowned for grave citizens, gave me my being and my father first. A merchant of great traffic through the world, Vincentio, come of the Bentivoli. Vincentio's son, brought up in Florence, it shall become to serve all hopes conceived to deck his fortune with his virtuous deeds. And therefore, Tranio, for the time I study, virtue and that part of philosophy will I apply that treats of happiness, by virtue specially to be achieved. Tell me thy mind, for I have Pisa left and am to Padua come, as he that leaves a shallow plash to plunge him in the deep, and with satiety seeks to quench his thirst. Me perdonati, gentle master mine, I am in all affected as yourself. Glad that you thus continue your resolve to suck the sweets of sweet philosophy. Only good master, while we do admire this virtue and this moral discipline, let's be no Stoics, nor no Stocks, I pray, or so devote to Aristotle's checks as Ovid be an outcast quite abjured. Bought logic with acquaintance that you have, and practice rhetoric in your common talk. Music and poets are used to quicken you. The mathematics and the metaphysics, fall to them as you find your stomach serves you. No profit grows where there's no pleasure, Tam. In brief, sir, study what you most affect. <laughs> Grammercy, Tranio, well dost thou advise. If Biondello thou would come ashore, we could at once put us in readiness and take a lodging fit to entertain such friends as time in Padua shall beget. But stay a while. What company is this? Master, some show to welcome us to town. Gentlemen, importune me no farther, for how I firmly am resolved, you know. That is, not to bestow my youngest daughter before I have a husband for the elder. If either of you both love Katharina, because I know you well and love you well, leave shall you have to court her at your pleasure. To court her, rather, she's too rough for me. There, there, Hortensia, will you anyway? I pray you, sir, is it your will to make a stale of me amongst these mates? Mates, mate? How mean you that? No mates for you unless you were of gentler, milder mode. If faith, sir, you shall never need to fear. I wish it is not halfway to her heart. But if it were, doubt not her care should be to comb yon model with a three-legged stool and paint your face and use you like a fool. From all such devil Good Lord delivered. And me too, good Lord. Hush, master, here's some good man's time to all. That wench is stark mad or wonderful uh, froward. But in the other's oh. silence do I see maids, mild behavior oh, and sobriety. Oh. Peace, Tranio. Well said, master. Mum and gaze your fill. Gentlemen, that I may soon make good what I have said, Bianca, get you in. Oh, oh let it not displease thee, good Bianca. <laughs> But I will love thee, <laughs> nevertheless, my girl. A pretty Pete. It is best put finger in the eye, and she knew why. Sister, content you in my discontent. Sir, to your pleasure humbly I subscribe. My books and instruments shall be my company. On them to look and practice by myself. Oh, Trudio, thou mayst hear Minerva speak. Signor Baptista, will you be so strange? Sorry am I that our good will affect Bianca's grief. Why will you mew her up, Signor Baptista, for this fiend of hell and make her bear the penance of her town? Oh, gentlemen, content ye, I am resolved. Go in, Bianca. But this good is not justice. And for I know she taketh most delight in music, instruments, and poetry, Schoolmasters will I keep within my house fit to instruct her youth. If you, Hortensio, or Senor Gremio, you know any such, prefer them hither. For to cunning men I will be very kind and liberal to mine own children in good bringing up. And so farewell. Katharina, you must stay, for I have more to commune with Bianca. Why, and a trust may go too, may I not? What? Shall I be appointed hours so as though belike I knew not what to take and what to leave? Oh, ah! You may go to the devil's dam. Your gifts are so good, here's none will hold you. Their love is not so great, Hortensio, but we may blow our nails together and fast it fairly out. Our cakes dough on both sides. Farewell. Yet for the love I bear, my sweet Bianca, if I can by any means light on a fit man to teach her that wherein she delights, I will wish him to her father. So will I, Signor Gremio. But a word, I pray. Though the nature of our quarrel yet never brooked par, no now upon advice it touches us both, that we may yet again have access to our fair mistress and be happy rivals in Bianca's love, 
to labor and effect one thing specially. What's that, I pray? Marry, sir, to get a husband for her sister. A husband? A devil? I say a husband. I say a devil. Thinkest thou, Hortensio, though her father be very rich, any man is so very a fool to be married to hell. Scrimmy, though it pass your patience and mine to endure her loud alarms, why, man, there be good fellows in the world, and a man could lighten them, would take her with all faults, and money enough. <laughs> I cannot tell. But I had as lief take her dowry with this condition to be whipped at the high cross every morning. Faith, as you say, there's small choice in rotten apples. But come, since this bar in law makes us friends, it shall be so far forth friendly maintained. Till by helping Baptista's eldest daughter to her husband, we set his youngest free for a husband, huh? and then have to it afresh. Ah. Sweet Bianca, happy man be his dole. He that runs fastest gets the ring. How say you, Signor Gremio? Oh, I am agreed. And would I had given him the best horse in Padua to begin his wooing that would thoroughly woo her, wed her, and bed her, and rid the house of her. Uh, come on. I pray, sir, tell me. Is it possible that love should of a sudden take such hold? Oh, Tranio, till I found it to be true, I never thought it possible or likely. But see, while idly I stood looking on, I found the effect of love in idleness. And now in plainness to confess to thee that art to me as secret and as dear as Anna to the Queen of Carthage was. Tranio, I burn, I pine, I perish, Tranio, if I achieve not this young, modest girl. Counsel me, Tranio, for I know thou canst. Assist me, Tranio, for I know thou wilt. Master, it is no time to chide you now. Affection is not rated from the heart. If love have touched you, naught remains but so. Rede me te captum quam queas minimo. <laughs> Grand mercies, lad, go forward, this contents. The rest will comfort, for thy counsel's sound. Master, you looked so longly on the maid, perhaps you mark not what's the pith of all. Oh, yes. I saw sweet beauty in her face, such as the daughter of a Gainor had, that made great Jove to humble him to her hand, when with his knees he kissed the Cretan strand. But saw you no more? Marked you not how her sister began to scold and raise up such a storm that mortal ears might hardly endure the din? Tranio, I saw her coral lips to move, and with her breath she did perfume the air. Sacred and sweet was all I saw in her. Nay, then, tis time to stir him from his trance. I pray, awake, sir. If you love the maid, bend thoughts and wits to achieve her. Thus it stands. Her elder sister is so cursed and shrewd that till the father rid his hands of her master, your love must live a maid at home. And therefore has he closely mewed her up, because she will not be annoyed with suitors. Oh, Tranio, what a cruel father's he! But art thou not advised? He took some care to get her cunning schoolmasters to instruct her. I marry am I, sir, and now tis plotted. I have it, Tranio. Master for my hand, both our inventions meet and jump in one. Tell me thine first. You will be schoolmaster and undertake the teaching of the maid. That's your device. It is. May it be done? Not possible. For who shall bear your part in being Padua here, Vincentio's son? Keep house and ply his book, welcome his friends, visit his countrymen and banquet them. Basta, content thee, for I have it full. We have not yet been seen in any house, nor can we be distinguished by our faces for man or master. Then it follows thus. Thou shalt be master, Tranio, in my stead. <laughs> Keep house and port and servants as I should. I will some other be, some Florentine, some Neapolitan or meaner man of Pisa. Tis hatched and shall be so. Tranio, at once uncase thee, take my coloured hat and cloak. When Biondello comes, he waits on thee. But I will charm him first to keep his tongue. So had you need. <laughs> In brief, sir, sith it your pleasure is, and I am tied to be obedient, for so your father charged me at our parting. Be serviceable to my son, quoth he, although I think twas in another sense. I am content to be Lucentio, because so well I love Lucentio. Tranio, be so, because Lucentio loves. And let me be a slave to achieve that maid whose sudden sight hath thralled my wounded eye. Master. Here comes the rogue. Sit up. Where have you been? Where have I been? Nay. How now? Where are you? Master, has my fellow Tarno stolen your clothes? Or you stolen his? Or both? <laughs> Pray, what's the news? Sir, I come hither. There's no time to jest, and therefore frame your manners to the time. Your fellow Tranio here, to save my life, puts my apparel and my countenance on, and I, for my escape, have put on his. For in a quarrel since I came ashore, I killed a man, <gasps> and fear I was descried. Wait you on him, I charge you as becomes, while I make way from hence to save my life. You understand me? Aye, sir. Wit. And not a jot of Tranio in your mouth. Tranio is changed into Lucentio. The better for him. <laughs> Would I was so too. So could I, Faith Boy, to have the next wish after that Lucentio indeed had Baptista's youngest daughter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sirrah, not for my sake, but for your masters, I advise you, use your manners discreetly in all kind of companies. 
when I'm alone, why, then I'm Tranio. Um, but in all places else, your master, Lucentio. Well, Tranio, let's go. One thing more rests at thy self-execute, to make one among these wooers. If thou ask me why, sufficeth my reasons are both good and weighty. <laughs> Verona, for a while I take my leave to see my friends in Padua, but of all my best beloved and approved friend Hortensio, and I trow this is his house. Here, Sir Grumio, knock, I say. Knock, sir? Whom should I knock? Is there any man who's rebused your worship? Villain, I say, knock me here soundly. Knock you here, sir? Why, sir, what am I, sir, that I should knock you here, sir? Villain, I say, knock me at this gate and wrap me well, or I'll knock your knave's pate. My master's grown quarrelsome. I should knock you first, and then I know after who comes by the worst. Will it not be, Faye and you'll not knock? I'll ring hell! Ooh. I'll try how you can so Ooh. far and sing it. Oh, help, mistress, help! My master's man! Now knock when Ooh. I bid you, sir, villain. Oh, how now? What's Ow. the matter? Ooh. My old friend Grumio and my <laughs> good Ooh. friend Petruccio. Uh. How do you all at Verona? Signor oh. Hortensio, come you to part the fray. Con tutto il cuore ben trovato, may I say. Alla nostra casa benvenuto. Molto onorato, signor mio Petruccio. Oh. Uh, rise, oh. Grumio, rise. Oh. We will compound this quarrel. Nay, it is no matter, sir, what he ledges in Latin. If this be not a lawful cause for me to leave his service, look you, sir. He bid me knock him and wrap him soundly, sir. Well, is it fit for a servant to use his master so, be perhaps for what I see two and thirty, a pip out? Who would to God our head well knocked at first then, and not Grumio come by the worst? A senseless villain, good Hortensio. I bade the rascal knock upon your gate and could not get him from my heart to do it. Knock at the gate? Oh, heaven, speak you not these words plain. Sirrah, knock me here, wrap me here, knock me well, and knock me sadly. And come you now with knocking at the gate? Sirrah, be gone, or talk <laughs> not, I advise you. To go patience, I am Grumio's pledge. Why, this is a heavy chance twixt him and you, your ancient, trusty, pleasant servant, Grumio. <laughs> and tell me now, sweet friend, what happy gale blows you to Padua here from old Verona? Such wind as scatters young men through the world to seek their fortune farther than at home, where small experience grows. But in a few, Signor Hortensio, thus it stands with me. Antonio, my father, is deceased, and I have thrust myself into this maze, happily to wive and thrive as best I may. Crowns in my purse I have, and goods at home, and so I'm come abroad to see the world. Petruchio, shall I then come roundly to thee, and wish thee to a shrewd, ill-favoured wife? Thou'dst thank me but a little for my counsel, and yet I'll promise thee she shall be rich and very rich. Uh, but thou art too much, my friend, and I'll not wish thee to... Signor Hortensio, twixt such friends as we, few words suffice, and therefore, if thou know one rich enough to be Petruchio's wife, as wealth is burdened of my wooing dance, be she as foul as was Florentia's love, as old as Sybil, and as cursed and shrewd as Socrates' Antippe, or a worse, she moves me not, or not removes at least affection's edge in me. Were she as rough as of the swelling Adriatic seas, I come to wive it wealthily in Padua. If wealthily, then happily in Padua. No, please. Nay, look, you say, he tells you flatly what his mind is. Why, give him gold enough and marry him to a puppet or an aglet baby, or old trot with there a tooth in the head, though she have as many diseases as two and fifty horses. Why, nothing comes amiss, so money comes with all. Petruchio, since we are stepped thus far in, I will continue that I broached in jest. I can, Petruchio, help thee to a wife with wealth enough and young and beauteous, brought up as best becomes a gentlewoman. Her only fault, and that is false enough, is that she is intolerable cursed and shrewd and throwered so beyond all measure that were my state far worse than it is, I would not wed her for a mine of gold. Well, tell your peace, thou knowest not gold's effect. Tell me her father's name, and tis enough, for I will board her, though she chide as loud as thunder when the clouds in autumn crack. Her father is Baptista Minola, an affable and courteous gentleman. Her name is Katharina Minola, renowned in Padua for her scolding tongue. I know her father, though I know not her, and he knew my deceased father well. I will not sleep, Hortensio, till I see her. Oh. And therefore, let me be thus bold with you to give you over at this first encounter. Unless you will accompany me thither. I'll pay you, sir. Let him go while the humour lasts. And my word, and she knew him as well as I do, she would think scolding would do little good upon him. She may perhaps call him half a score knaves or so. Why, that's nothing. And he begin once, he'll rail in his rope tricks. I'll tell you what, sir, and she stand but a little, he will throw a figure in her face and so to speak her with it that she shall have no more eyes to see with all than a cat. <laughs> you know him not, sir. Tarry, Petruchio, I must go with thee. For in Baptistus keep my treasuries. He hath the jewel of my life in hold, his youngest daughter, beautiful Bianca, and her withholds from me and other more suitors to her and rivals in my love, supposing it a thing impossible for those defects I have before rehearsed that ever Katharina will be wooed. Therefore this order hath Baptista Tern that none shall have access unto Bianca till Catherine the Cursed have got a husband. Catherine the Cursed? 
A title for a maid, of all titles the worst. Now shall my friend Petruchio do me grace and offer me, disguised in sober robes, to old Baptista as a schoolmaster, well seen in music, to instruct Bianca, that so I may, by this device at least, have leave and leisure to make love to her, and unsuspected court her by herself. Here's no knavery. See, to beguile the old folks, how the young folks lay their heads together. Oh. Master, master, oh. look about you. Who goes there? Oh. Ha. Peace, Grumio, it is a rival of my love. Oh. Petruchio, oh. stand by a while. A proper stripling, oh. and inamorous. Ah, oh. oh, very well. I have perused the note. Uh, hark you, sir. I'll have them very fairly bound. All books of love, see that at any hand. And see you read no other lectures to her, you understand me. Over and beside Signor Baptista's liberality, I'll mend it with a largesse. And take your papers, too, and let me have them very well perfumed, for she is sweeter than perfume itself to whom they go to. What will you read to her? Whatever I read to her, I'll plead for you as for my patron. Stand you so assured, as ah. firmly as yourself was still in place. Yea, and perhaps with more successful words than you. Um, unless you were a scholar, sir. Oh, this learning, what a thing it is. Oh, this woodcock, what an ass it is. Peace, sir. Grumio, mum. God save you, Signor Gremio. And you're well met, Signor Atencio. Trow you whither I am going? To Baptista Minola. I, I promise to inquire carefully about a schoolmaster for the fair Bianca, and by good fortune I have lighted well on this young man, for learning and behaviour fit for her turn, well read in poetry and other books. Good ones, I warrant ye. Tis well. And I have met a gentleman hath promised me to help one to another, a fine musician, to instruct our mistress. So shall I no wit be behind in duty to fair Bianca, so beloved of me? Beloved of me, and that my deeds shall prove. Oh, that his bag shall prove. Scrimio, tis now no time to vent our love. Listen to me, and if you speak me fair, I'll tell you news indifferent good for either. Here is a gentleman whom by chance I met, upon agreement from us to his liking, will undertake to woo cursed Catherine, yea, and to marry her, if her dowry please. So said, so done is well. Hortensio, have you told him all her faults? I know she's an irksome brawling scold, if that be all, masters. I hear no harm. No. Says me so, friend? What countryman? Born in Verona, old Antonio's son. My father dead, my fortune lives for me. And I do hope good days and long to see. Oh, sir, such a life with such a wife were strange. But if you have a stomach to it, a God's name, you shall have me assisting you in all. But will you woo this wild cat? Will I live? Will he woo her? Aye, or I'll hang her. Why came I hither but to that intent? Think you a little din can daunt mine ears? Have I not in my time heard lions roar? Aye. Have I not heard the sea, puffed up with winds, rage like an angry boar, chafed with sweat? Have I not heard great ordnance in the field and heaven's artillery thunder in the skies? Ooh. Have I not in a pitched battle heard loud larums, neighing steeds, and trumpets clang? And do you tell me of a woman's tongue that gives not half so great a blow to hear as will a chestnut in a farmer's fire? Tosh, tosh, fear boys with bugs. For he fears none. Hortensio, hark. This gentleman is happily arrived, my mind presumes, for his own good and ours. I promised we would be contributors and bear his charge of wooing whatsoever. And so we will, uh, provided that he win her. I would I were sure of a good dinner. Gentlemen, God save you. Uh, if I may be bold, tell me, I beseech you, which is the readiest way to the house of Signor Baptista Minola? Uh, he that has the two fair daughters. Is to you mean? Even he beyond Dello? Hark you, sir. You mean not her to... Perhaps him and her, sir. What uh -huh. have you to do? Not her the chide, sir, at any hand, I pray. Oh, I love no chider, sir. Beyond Dello, let's away. Well begun, Charlie. Sir, a word ere you go. Are you a suitor to the maid you talk of, yea or no? And if I be, sir, is it any offence? No, if without more words you'll get you hence. Why, sir, I pray, are not the streets as free for me as for you? But so is not she. For what reason, I beseech you? For this reason, if you will know, that she's the choice love of Signor Gremio. That she's the chosen of Signor Hortensio. Softly, my masters. If you be gentlemen, do me this right. Hear me with patience. Baptista is a noble gentleman to whom my father is not all unknown. And were his daughter fairer than she is, she may more suitors have than me for one. Fair leader's daughter have a thousand wooers. Then, well, one more may fair be anchor have. And so she shall. Lucentio shall make one, though Paris came in hope to speed alone. What? This gentleman will outtalk us all. Sir, give him head. I know he'll prove a jade. Hortensia, to what end are all these words? Sir, let me be so bold as ask you. Did you yet ever see Baptista's daughter? No, sir. But here I do that he hath too. 
The one as famous for her scolding tongue as is the other for beauteous modesty. So, sir, the first's for me. Let her go by. Yea, leave that labour to great Hercules. Oh, let it be more than outside his twelve. Sir, understand you this of me, Sooth. The youngest daughter whom you hearken for, her father keeps from all access of suitors and will not promise her to any man until the older sister first be wed. The younger then is free, and not before. If it be so, sir, then you are a man must stead us all, and me among the rest. And if you break the ice and do this feat, achieve the elder, set the younger free for our excess, whose hap shall be to have her will not so graceless be to be in grace. Sir, you say well, and well you do conceive, and since you do profess to be a suitor, you must, as we do, gratify this gentleman, to whom we all rest generally beholding. Sir, I shall not be slack. In sign whereof, please we may contrive this afternoon and quaff carouses to our mistress' health, and do as adversaries do in law. Strive mightily, <laughs> but eat and drink as friends. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Fellows, let's be gone. The motion's good indeed, and be it so. Petruchio, I shall be your benvenuto. <laughs> Not, not wrong yourself to make a bondmaid and a slave of me, that I disdain. But for these other gods, unbind my hands, I pull them off myself, ye all my raiment to my petticoat. Oh, oh what oh, you oh, will oh. command me, hmm. will I do? So well I know my duty to my elders. All thy suitors, here I charge thee, tell whom thou lovest best. See thou dissemble not. Believe me, sister, of all the men alive, I never yet beheld that special face which I could fancy more than any other. Minion, thou liest, is not Hortensio. If you affect him, sister, here I swear, I'll plead for you myself, but you shall have him. Oh, then belike you fancy riches more, you will have Gremio to keep you fair. Is it for him you do envy me so? Oh. <laughs> Nay, then you jest. And now I will perceive you have but jested with me all this while. Oh. I prithee, Sister Kate, untie my if hands. If that be jest, then all the rest oh. are so. Oh, why? How now, dame? Whence grows this insolence? Bianca, stand aside. Poor girl, she weeps. Go ply thy needle, meddle not with her. For shame, thou Hilde, of a devilish spirit. Why dost thou wrong her that did ne'er wrong thee? When did she cross thee with a bitter word? Her silence flouts me, and I'll be there! Caught in my sight? Bianca, get thee in. What? Will you not suffer me? Nay, now I see. She is your treasure. She must have a husband. I must dance barefoot on her wedding day, and for your love to her, lead apes in hell. Kate, Talk Kate, not I... to me. Oh, I will go sit and weep. Till I can find occasion of revenge. Was ever gentleman thus grieved as I? But who comes here? Good morrow, neighbor Baptista. Good morrow, neighbor Gremio. God save you, gentlemen. God save you. And you, sir. good sir. Pray, have you not a daughter called Katerina, fair and virtuous? I have a daughter, sir, called Katerina. You are too blunt. Go to it order. You then. wrong me, Signor Gremio. Give me leave. Oh. I am a gentleman of Verona, sir. That hearing of her beauty and her wit, her affability and bashful modesty, her wondrous qualities and mild behavior, am bold to show myself a forward guest within your house to make mine eye the witness of that report which I so oft have heard. And for an entrance to my entertainment, I do present you with a man of mine, cunning in music and the mathematics, to instruct her fully in those sciences whereof I know she is not ignorant. Accept of him or else you do me wrong. His name is Licio, born in Mantua. You're welcome, sir, and he, for your good sake. But for my daughter Catherine, this I know she is not for your turn, the more my grief. I see you do not mean to part with her. Huh? Or else you like not of my company. Mistake me not, I speak, but as I find. Whence are you, sir? What may I call your name? Petruchio is my name. Antonio's son, a man well known throughout all Italy. I know him well. Oh, you're welcome for his sake. Saving your tale, Petruchio, I pray let us that a poor petitioner speak to. Beccare, you are marvellous forward. Oh, pardon me, Signor Gremio, I would fain be doing. I doubt it not, sir, but you will curse your wooing. Neighbor, this is a gift very grateful, I am sure of it. To express the like kindness, myself, that have been more kindly beholding to you than any, freely give unto you this young scholar that hath been long studying at Reims, as cunning in Greek, Latin, and other languages, as the other in music and mathematics. His name is Cambio. 
Pray accept his service. A thousand thanks, Senor Grambio. Welcome, good Cambio. But, uh, a gentle sir, methinks you walk like a stranger. May I be so bold to know the cause of your coming? Uh, pardon me, sir, the boldness is mine own. That being a stranger in this city here do make myself a suitor to your daughter. Uh -huh. And to be anchor, hmm. fair and virtuous. Nor is your firm resolve unknown to me in the preferment of the eldest sister. This liberty is all that I request, that upon knowledge of my parentage, I may have welcome amongst the rest that woo, and free access and favour as the rest. And toward the education of your daughters, I here bestow a simple instrument and this small packet of Greek and Latin books. If you accept them, then their worth is great. Lucentio is your name. Of whence, I pray? Of Pisa, sir, son to Vincentio. A mighty man of Pisa by report. I know him well. You're very welcome, sir. Uh, take you the lute and you the set of books. You shall go see your pupils presently. Hello, within. Sarah, lead these gentlemen to my daughters and tell them both these are their tutors. Bid them use them well. <clears throat> we will go walk a little in the orchard and then to dinner. Oh, your Passing welcome, and so I pray you all to think yourself. Signor Baptista, my business asketh haste, and every day I cannot come to woo. You knew my father well, and in him me left solely heir to all his lands and goods, which I have bettered rather than decreased. Then tell me, if I get your daughter's love, what dowry shall I have with her to wife? After my death, the one half of my lands, and in possession twenty thousand crowns. And for that dowry, I'll assure her of her widowhood be it that she survived me, in all my lands and leases whatsoever. Let specialties be therefore drawn between us, that covenants may be kept on either hand. Aye, when the special thing is well obtained, that is her love, for that is all in all. Why, that is nothing. For I tell you, father, I am as peremptory as she proud-minded. And where two raging fires meet together, they do consume the thing that feeds their fury. Though little fire grows great with little wind, yet extreme gust will blow out fire and all. So I to her, and so she yields to me. For I am rough and woo not like a babe. Well, mayst thou woo, and happy be thy speed. But uh, be thou armed for some unhappy words. Aye, to the proof, as mountains are for winds that shake not, though they blow perpetually. Oh. Well, now, my friend, why does I look so pale? For fear, I promise you, if I look pale. Uh, but will my daughter prove a good musician? I think she'll sooner prove a soldier. Iron may hold with her, but never lutes. Why, then, thou canst not break her to the lute? I know, for she hath broke the lute to me. I did but tell her she mistook her frets and bowed her hand to teach her fingering, when with a most impatient devilish spirit, frets call you these, quoth she, I'll fume with them. And with that word, she struck me on the head and through the instrument my pick made way. And there I stood amazed for a while as on a pillory, looking through the lute while she did call me rascal, fiddler, and twangling jack with 20 such vile terms as she had studied to misuse me so. Now, by the world, it is a lusty wench. I love her 10 times more than e'er I did. Oh, how I long to have some chat. Oh. Go with me and be not so discomforted. Proceed in practice with my younger daughter. She's apt to learn and thankful for good turns. Signor Pachuca, will you go with us or shall I send my daughter Kate to you? I pray you do. I will attend her here and woo her with some spirit when she comes. Say that she rail. Why, then I'll tell her plain she sings as sweetly as a nightingale. Say that she frown, I'll say she looks as clear as morning roses, newly washed with dew. Say she be mute and will not speak a word, why? Then I'll commend her volubility and say she uttereth piercing eloquence. If she do be be pack, I'll give her thanks as though she be me stay by her a week. If she deny to wed, I'll crave the day when I shall ask the bands and when be married. But if she come, now Petruchio, speak. Good morrow, Kate. Oh, that's your name, I hear? Well, have you heard? But something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine that do talk of me. You lie, in faith, for you are called plain Kate. And bonny Kate, and sometimes Kate the Cursed, but... Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom. Kate of Kate Hall, my super dainty Kate. For dainties are all Kates, and therefore, Kate, take this of me. Kate of my consolation. Hearing thy mildness praised in every town, thy virtues spoke of, and thy beauty sounded, yet not so deeply as to thee belongs, 
Myself, I moved to Wooby for my wife. Moved in good time. Let him that moved you hither remove you hence. I knew you at the first you were a movable. Why, what's a movable? A join stool. Thou hast hit it. Come, sit on me. Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such jade as you with me, you mean. Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee, for knowing thee to be but young and light. Too light for such a swain as you to catch. And, and get as heavy as my weight should be. Should be. Should buzz. Well tame and like a buzzard. <laughs> oh, slow-winged turtle should a buzzard take thee. Aye, for a turtle as he takes a buzzard. Come, come, you wasp. Be faith, you're too angry. If I be waspish, best beware my sting. My remedy is then to pluck it out. Aye, if the fool could find it where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp could wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails, and so farewell. What? With my tongue in your tail? Nay, come again, good Kate. I am a gentleman. That I'll try. I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. Well, so may you lose your arms. If you strike me, you are no gentleman. And if no gentleman, why then no arms? A herald, Kate. Oh, put me in thy books. What is your crest? A coxcomb? A combless cock, so Kate will be my hen. No cock of mine, you crow to like a crane. Nay, come, Kate, come, you must not look so sour. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why, here's no crab, and therefore look not sour. There is, there is. Then show it me. If I had I a glass, I would. What? <laughs> you mean my face? Well aimed, of such a young one. Now, by St. George, I am too young for you. Yet you are withered. It is with care. I care not. Nay, hear you, Kate. In sooth, you escape not so. I'll chafe you with thy tally. Let <laughs> no, me go. not a whit. I find you passing gentle. <sighs> Twas told me you were rough <sighs> and coy and sullen. And now I find report a very liar, for <sighs> thou art pleasant, gamesome, passing courteous. No. But slow in speech, yet sweet <sighs> as springtime. Flowers, thou canst not frown. <sighs> Thou canst not look askance, nor bite the lip as angry wenches will, nor hast thou pleasure to be cross in talk, but thou with mildness entertainst thy wooers with gentle conference, soft and affable. No. Why does the world report that Kate doth lip? Oh, slanderous world! Kate, like the hazel twig, is straight and slender and as brown in hue as hazelnuts, and sweeter than the kernels. No. Oh, let me see thee walk. Thou dost not halt. Go, fool, and whom thou keep'st come on. Did ever Dian so become a grove as Kate this chamber with her princely gait? Oh, 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 be thou Dian, and let her be Kate, and then let Kate be chaste, and Dian sport for. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore from the mother wit. A witty mother, witless else her son. Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Mary, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. And therefore, setting all this chat aside, thus in plain terms, your father hath consented that you shall be my wife. Your dowry agreed on. And will you, nil you, I will marry you. Now, Kate, I am a husband for your turn. For by this light whereby I see thy beauty, thy beauty that hath made me like thee well, thou must be married to no man but me. For I am he am born to tame you, Kate. And bring you from a wild Kate to a Kate conformable as other household Kate. Here comes your father. Never make denial. I must and will have Catherine to my wife. Ah, Signor Producco, how speed you with my daughter? How but well, sir, how but well? It were impossible I should speed a miss. Why well, had our daughter Catherine in your dumps? Call you me daughter? No, now I promise you, you have showed a tender fatherly regard to wish me wed to one half lunatic, a madcap ruffian, and a swearing jack that thinks with oaths to face the matter out. Father, tis thus. Yourself and all the world that talked of her have talked amiss of her. If she be cursed, it is for policy. Oh. For she's not froward, but modest as the dove. She is not hot, but temperate as the morn. For patience, she'll prove a second grizzle, and Roman Lucrece for her chastity. And to conclude, we've agreed so well together that upon Sunday is the wedding day. I'll see thee hanged on Sunday first. Ah, uh, Petruchio, she says she'll see thee hanged is first. Is this your speeding? Nay, then, good night, our Be patient, gentlemen. I choose her for myself. If she and I be pleased, what's that to you? Tis bargain, twixt us twain being alone, that she shall still be cursed in company. I tell you, tis incredible to believe how much she loves me. Oh, the kindest, Kate. <laughs> she hung about my neck, and kiss on kiss she vied so fast, protesting oath on oath, that in a twink she won me to her love. Oh, oh, you are novices. Tis a world to see how tame, when men and women are alone, a meacock wretch can make the cursed is true. Give me the hand, Kate. I will unto Venice to buy paddle against the wedding day. Provide the feast, Father, and bid the guests 
I will be sure my Catherine shall be fine. I know not what to say. But give me your hands. God sends you joy, Petruchio. Tis a match. Hey, hey, say we. We will be witnesses. Father and wife and gentlemen, adieu. I will enter Venice. Sunday comes apace. We'll have rings and things and fine array. And kiss me, Kate. Oh. We'll be married on Sunday. <laughs> Oh, was ever match clapped up so suddenly. Faith, gentlemen, now I play a merchant's part and venture madly on a desperate martyr. <laughs> Twas a commodity lay fretting by you. Twill bring you gain or perish on the seas. The gain, uh, I seek, is quiet in the match. No doubt, but he hath got a quiet catch. Oh, but now, Baptista, to your younger daughter, now is the day we long have looked for. I am your neighbour, and was suitor first. And I am one that loves Bianca more than words can witness or your thoughts can guess. Youngling, thou canst not love so dear as I. Grabia, thy love doth free. But thine doth fry. Skipper, stand back. Tis age that nourishes. But youth in ladies' eyes that flourish. Content you, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I'll compound this strife, tis deeds must win the prize. And he of both that can assure my daughter greatest dower shall have my Bianca's love. Say, Signor Gramio, what can you assure her? Ah, first, as you know, my house within the city is richly furnished with plate and gold. Basins and ewers to lave her dainty hands, my hangings all of Tyrian tapestry, in ivory coffers I have stuffed my crowns, in cypress chests my arras counterpoints, costly apparel, tents and canopies, fine linen, turkey cushions bossed with pearl, valance of Venice gold in needlework, pewter and brass, and all things that belong to house or housekeeping. Then at my farm, I have a hundred milks kind to the pale, six score fat oxen standing in my stalls, and all things answerable to this portion. Myself am struck in years, I must confess, uh, and if I die tomorrow, this is hers. If whilst I live, she will be only mine. That only came well in. Look, sir, list to me. I am my father's heir and only son. If I may have your daughter to my wife, I'll leave her houses three or four as good within rich Pisa walls as any one old Signor Gremio has in Padua. Besides, two thousand ducats by the year of fruitful land, <laughs> all of which shall be her jointure. Oh. <laughs> What, have I pinched you, Signor Gremio? Two thousand ducats by the year of land. My land amounts not to so much in all. The, uh, that she shall have, uh, besides an argosy that now is lying in Marseille's road. <coughs> what, have I choked you with an argosy? Gremio, tis no, my father hath no less than three great argosies, besides two galleuses and twelve tight galleys. These I will assure her, and twice as much whate'er thou offerest next. Uh, nay, I have offered all. I have no more. And she can have no more than all I have. If you like me, she shall have me and mine. Why, then, the maid is mine from all the world by your firm promise. Gremio is outvied. I must confess, your offer is the best. And let your father make her the assurance she is your own, else you must pardon me. Oh! If you should die before him, where's her dower? Oh, that's but a cavil. He is old, I young. Huh? And may not young men die as well as old? Well, gentlemen, I am thus resolved. On Sunday next, you know, my daughter Catherine is to be married. Now, on the Sunday following, shall Bianca be bride to you, ah. if you make this assurance, if not to Signor Gremio. And so I take my leave and thank you both. Adieu, good neighbour. Now I fear thee not, Sarah, young gamester, your father were a fool to give thee all, and in his waning age set foot under thy table. Tart a toy! An old Italian fox is not so kind, my boy. Ah, vengeance on your crafty, withered hide. <laughs> Yet I have faced it with a card of ten. <sighs> Tis in my head to do my master good. I see no reason but suppose Lucentio must get a father called supposed Vincentio. And that's a wonder. 
Fathers commonly do get their children, but in this case of wooing, a child shall get a sire if I fail not of my cunning. <laughs> Too forward, sir. Have you so soon forgot the entertainment her sister Catherine welcomed you with all? But, wrangling pedant, this is the patroness of heavenly harmony. Then give me leave to have prerogative. And when in music we have spent an hour, your lecture shall have leisure for as much. Preposterous ass. You never read so far to know the cause why music was ordained. Was it not to refresh the mind of man after his studies or his usual pain? And give me leave to read philosophy. And while I pause, serve in your... Harmony. Sir, I will not bear these braves of thine. Why, gentlemen, you do me double wrong to strive for that which resteth in my choice. I am no breaching scholar in the schools. I'll not be tied to hours nor pointed times, but learn my lessons as I please myself. And to cut off all strife, here sit we down. Take you your instrument, play you the whiles. His lecture will be done ere you have tuned. You'll leave his lecture when I am in tune. That will be never. Tune your instrument. <laughs> Where left we last? Here, madam. Um, hic ibat simois, hic es sige altelus, hic steterat priami regia celsarsenis. Conster, then. Uh, hic ibat, as I told you before, uh, simois, I am Lucentio. Uh, hic est, son unto Vincentio of Pisa. Uh, sige altelus, disguised thus to get your love. Uh, hic steterat, and that Lucentio that comes a wooing, uh, priami, is my man Tranio, Regia, bearing my port, Kelsar Senis, that we might beguile the old pantaloon. <laughs> Madam, my instrument's in tune. Let's hear. Oh, fie, the treble jars. Spit in the hole, man, and tune again. <laughs> now, let me see if I can constate. it. Hic ibat simois? I know you not. Hic est segea tellus? I trust you not. Hic steterat priami? Shh, take it here as not. Regia? Presume not. Celsa senis? Despair not. Madam, tis now in tune. All but the bass. The bass is right, tis the bass knave that jars. How fiery and forward our pedant is. Now for my life the knave doth court my love. Pedasculi, I'll watch you better yet. Ah, in time I may believe. Yet, I mistrust. Mistrust it not. <coughs> For sure, Iacades was Ajax called so from his grandfather. I must believe, my master, else I promise you I should be arguing still upon that doubt. But let it rest. Uh, no, Ligio, to you. Good master, take it not unkindly, pray, that I have been thus pleasant with you both. You may go walk. And give me leave a while. My lessons make no music in three parts. <laughs> Are you so formal, sir? Well... I must wait and watch with all, for but I be deceived, our fine musician groweth amorous. Madam, before you touch the instrument to learn the order of my fingering, I must begin with rudiments of art to teach you gamut in a briefer sort, more pleasant, pithy, and effectual than hath been taught by any of my trade. And there it is in writing, fairly drawn. Why, I am past my gamut long ago. Yet read the gamut of Hortensio. <sighs> gamut I am. The ground of all accord. A re, to plead Hortensio's passion. Be me, Bianca take him for thy lord. Si faut, that loves with all affection. Di sol re, one cleft, two notes have I. Ella me, show pity, or I die. Call you this gamut. Tut, I like it not. Old fashions please me best. I'm not so nice to change true rules for odd inventions. Mistress, your father prays you leave your books and help to dress your sister's chamber up. You know, tomorrow is the wedding day. Farewell, sweet masters both. I must be gone. Faith, mistress, then I have no cause to stay. But I have cause to pry to this pedant. Methinks he looks as though he were in love. Yet if thy thoughts, Bianca, be so humble to cast thy wandering eyes on every tale, seize thee that list. If once I find thee ranging, Hortensio will be quit with thee by changing.
Signor Lucentio, this is the appointed day that Catherine and Petruchio should be married. And yet we hear not of our son-in-law. What will be said? What mockery will it be? To want the bridegroom when the priest attends to speak the ceremonial rites of marriage? What says Lucentio to the shame of ours? No shame but mine. I must forsooth be forced to give my hand opposed against my heart unto a mad brain Rudesby full of spleen who wooed in haste and means to wed at leisure. I told you I he was a frantic fool, hiding his bitter jest in blunt behavior, and to be noted for a merry man he'll woo a thousand. Point the day of marriage, make friends, invite and proclaim the bans, yet never means to wed where he hath wooed. Now must the world point at poor Catherine and say, lo, there is mad Petruchio's wife. If it would please him, come and marry her. Patience, good Catherine, and Baptista too. Upon my life, Petruchio means but well whatever fortune stays him from his word. Though he be blunt, I know him passing wise. Though he be merry, yet with all he's honest. Would Catherine had never seen him, though? Go, girl, I cannot blame thee now to weep. For such an injury would vex a very saint, much more a shrew of thy impatient humour. Master, master, news, old news and such news as you never heard is of. Is it new and old too? How may that be? Why, is it not news to hear that Petruchio's coming? Is he come? Why, no, sir. Oh, well, then. He is coming. When will he be here? When he stands with I am and sees you there. But say, what to thine old news? Why, Petruchio is coming in a new hat and an old jerkin, a pair of old British thrice turned, a pair of boots that have been candle cases, one buckled, another laced, an old rusty sword taken out of the town armory with a broken hilt and chapers, with two broken points, his horse hipped with an old mothy saddle and stirrups of no kindred, besides possessed with the glanders and like to mosey in the giant, troubled with the lampers, infected with the fashions, full of wingall, spat with spavins, raved with the yellows, past cured of the five stock, spoiled with the staggers, been on with the bots, weighed in the back and shoulder, shot and near leg before, and with a half cheek bit and headstall the sheep's leather, which being restrained to keep him from stumbling, hath been off and burst and now repaired with knots. One girth, six times pieced, and a woman's crupper of the lord, hath two letters for her name, fairly set down in studs, and here and there pieced with pack thread. Who comes with him? Oh, sir, it's lackey, for all the world, comparison like the horse, with a linen stock on one leg and a cursy bootos on the other, guarded with a red and blue list, an old hat, and the humour of faulty fancies pricked in for a feather. A monster, a very monster in apparel, and not like a Christian footboy or a gentleman's lackey. Oh, what the... Uh, it is some odd mm. humour pricks him to this fashion, oh. yet oftentimes he goes but being apparel. Oh, I'm glad he's come, howsoever. He comes. Why, sir, he comes not. Didst thou not say he comes? Who? The Petruchio Aye, came. Aye, that Petruchio came. No, sir, I say his horse comes with him in his back. Why, that's all right. And now, if I say, Jamie, I hold you a penny, a horse a man is more than one, and yet not many. Come! Oh. Where be these gallants? Who's at home? You're welcome, sir. And yet I come not well. And yet you halt not? Not so well apparelled as I wish you were. Were it better, I should rush in thus. But where is Kate? Where is my lovely bride? How does my father, gentle, methinks you frown, and wherefore gaze this goodly company as if they saw some wondrous monument, some comet, or unusual prodigy? Why, sir, you know this is your wedding day. First we were sad, fearing you would not come now. Sadder that you come, so unprovided fight doth this habit. Shame to your estate, an eyesore to our solemn festival. And tell us what, what occasion of import hath all so long detained you from your wife and sent you hither so unlike yourself. Tedious it were to tell and harsh to hear. Suffice it I am come to keep my word. Though in some part and force it to digress, which at more leisure I will so excuse, as you shall well be satisfied with all. But where is Kate? I stay too long from her, the morning wears. Tis time we were at church. See not your bride in these unreverent robes. Go to my chamber, put on clothes of mine. Not I, believe me, thus I'll visit her. But thus I trust you will not marry her. God so even thus, never have done with words. To me she's married, not unto my clothes. Could I repair what she will wear in me, as I can change these poor accoutrements to her well for Kate and better for myself? But what a fool am I to chat with you when I should bid good morrow to my bride and seal the title with a lovely kiss! Well, uh, well. He hath some meaning in his mad attire. Hmm. We, we will persuade him, be it possible, to put on better ere he go to church. I'll after him and see the event of this. <laughs> Love can
concerneth us to add her father's liking, which to bring to pass as I before imparted to your worship. I am to get a man, whate'er he be, his skills not match, we'll fit him to our turn, and he shall be Vincentio of Pisa, and make assurance here in Padua of greater sums than I have promised. So shall you quietly enjoy your hope and marry sweet Bianca with consent. Were it not that my fellow schoolmaster doth watch Bianca's steps so narrowly, to a good methinks to steal our marriage, which once performed, let all the world say no. I'll keep mine own, despite of all the world. That by degrees we mean to look into and watch our vantage in this business. <laughs> we'll overreach the greybeard Gremio, the narrow prying father Minola, the quaint musician Amorous Licio, <laughs> all for my master's sake, Lucentio. <laughs> oh, Signor Gremio, <laughs> came you from the church? <laughs> Oh, 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 as willingly as e'er I came from school. And is the bride and bridegroom coming home? A bridegroom, say you? Oh, she's a groom indeed. A grumbling groom, and that the girl so fine. Well, cursed her than she? Why, it is impossible. <laughs> Why, he's a devil, a devil, a very fiend. Why, she's a devil, a devil, the <laughs> devil's damn. Tut, she's a lamb, a dove, a fool to him. I'll tell you, Sir Lucentio, when the priest should ask if Catherine should be his wife, Aye, by God's wounds, quoth he, and swore so loud that all amazed the priest let fall the book. <laughs> <laughs> and as he stooped to take it up again, the mad-brained bridegroom took him such a cuff that down fell priest and book and book and <laughs> No, take them up, quoth he, if any less. What, what said the wench when he rose again? Oh, trembled and shook. For why he stamped and swore as if the vicar meant to cousin him. But, but after many ceremonies done, he calls for wine. Oh, hell! quoth he, as if he'd been aboard carousing to his mates after a storm. Quaffed off the muscadel and threw the sops all in the sexton's face. <laughs> <laughs> Having no other reason but that his beard grew thin and hungerly and seemed to ask him sops as he was drinking. <laughs> well, this done, he took the bride about the neck and kissed her lips with such a glamorous smack that at the parting all the church did echo. <laughs> uh, and I, seeing this, came thence for very shame. Uh, and after me, I know the rout is coming. Such a mad marriage never was before. Now, hark, hark, I hear the minstrels play. <laughs> Gentlemen and friends, I thank you for your pains. I know you think to dine with me today and have prepared great store of wedding cheer. But so it is, my haste doth call me hence, and therefore here I mean to take my leave. Is possible you will away tonight? I must away today before night come. Uh -huh. Now make it no wonder. If you knew my business, you would entreat me rather go than stay. And honest company, I thank you all that have beheld me give away myself to this most patient, sweet, and virtuous wife. Dine with my father, drink a health to me, for I must hence, and farewell to you all. Let us entreat you stay till after dinner. It may not be. Let me entreat you. It cannot be. Let me entreat you. I am content. Are you content to stay? I am content you shall entreat me stay, but yet not stay, and treat me how you can. Now, if you love me, stay. Grumio! My horse! I shall they be ready. The oaks have eaten the horses. Nay, then do what thou canst. I will not go today. No, nor tomorrow, not till I please myself. The door is open, sir. There lies your way. You may be jogging whilst your boots are green. For me, I'll not be gone till I please myself. Tis like you'll prove a jolly surly groom that take it on you at the first so round. Okay, Let... content thee, prithee, be not angry. I will be angry. Okay, what is thou to do? Okay, Father, okay. be quiet. He shall stay my leisure. I Mary, sir, now it begins to work. Gentlemen, forward to the bridal dinner. I see a woman may be made a fool if she had not a spirit to resist. They shall go forward, Kate, at thy command. Obey the bride, you that attend on her. Go to the feast, revel and domineer. Carouse full measure to her maidenhead. Be mad and merry, or go hang yourselves. But for my bonny Kate, she must with me. I will be master of what is mine own. She is my goods, my chattels. She is my house, my household stuff, my field, my barn, my horse, my ox, my ass, my anything. 
And here she stands. What? Touch her, whoever dare. I'll bring mine action on the proudest he that stops my way in Padua. Groom you up. Draw forth thy weapon. We're beset with thieves. Rescue thy mistress, if thou be a man. Fear not, sweet wench. They shall not touch thee, Kate. I'll butler thee against a million. Nay, <laughs> let them go, a couple of quiet ones. <laughs> Were they not quickly? I should die with laughing. Of all bad matches, never was the like. <laughs> Mistress, what's your opinion of your sister? That being mad herself, she's madly mated. <laughs> I warranted Petruchio is cated. <laughs> Neighbors and friends, though bride and bridegroom wants for to supply the places of the table, you know there wants no junk kids at the feast. Uh, looks at you. You shall supply the bridegroom's place and let Bianca take her sister's room. Shall sweet Bianca practice how to bride? She shall, Lucentio. Come, gentlemen, let's go. High on all tired jades, on all mad musters, and all foul ways. Was ever man so beaten? Was ever man so raved? Was ever man so weary? I am sent before to make a fire, and they are coming after to warm them. Now, were I not a little pot and soon hot, my very lips might freeze to my teeth, my tongue to the roof of my mouth, my heart in my belly, ere I should come by a fire to thaw me. But I, with blowing the fire, shall warm myself. For considering the weather, a taller man than I will take cold. Hello! Ho, Curtis! Who is that, Corso Coldly? A piece of ice. Oh. If thou doubt it, thou mayst slide from my shoulder to my heel with no greater a run but my head and my neck. A fire, good Curtis. Is my master and his wife coming, Grumio? Oh, aye, Curtis, aye, and therefore fire, fire, cast on no water. Is she so hot a shrew as she's reported? She was, good Curtis, before this frost. But thou knowest winter tames man, woman, and beast. What hath tamed my old master and my new mistress and my fellow Curtis? Oh, where, you three-inch fool? I'm no beast. <laughs> am I but three inches? Why, thy horn is a foot, and so long am I at the least. But wilt thou make a fire? Or shall I complain on thee to our mistress, whose hand, she being now at hand, thou shalt soon feel to thy cold comfort for being slow in thy hot office? I prithee, good Grumio, tell me, how goes the world? A cold world, Curtis, in every office but thine, and therefore fire. Do thy duty and have thy duty, for my master and mistress are almost frozen to death. There's fire ready, and therefore, good Grumio, the news. Why, Jack boy, ho oh boy, and as much news as I wilt. Come, you're so full of coney catch. Why, therefore, fire, for I've caught extreme cold. Mm. Oh, where's the cook? Supper ready. Aye. The house trimmed. Aye. Rushes strewed. Aye. Cobwebs swept. Aye. The serving men in their new fustian. Aye. The white stockings. Aye. And every officer's wedding garment on. Aye. Neither Jack's fair within, and the Jill's fair without. Aye. The carpet's laid, and Aye. everything in order. Aye, all ready. And therefore I pray thee news. Yeah, first, no, my horse is tired, my master and mistress fallen out. How? Out of their saddles and into the dirt, and thereby hangs a tail. Let's have it, good Grumio. Lend thine ear. Here. There. This is to feel a tale, not to hear a tale. <laughs> and therefore it is called a sensible tale. And this cuff was but to knock at your ear beseech Lesley. Now I begin. In Primus we came down a foul hill. My master riding behind my mistress. Both of one horse? What's that to thee? Why, a, a horse. Tell thou the tale. Oh. But hadst thou not crossed me, thou shouldst have heard how her horse fell, and she unto her horse. Thou shouldst have heard in how miry a place, how she was bemoiled, how he left her with a horse upon her, how he beat me because her horse stumbled, how she waded through the dirt to oh. pluck him off me, how he swore, how she prayed that never prayed before. How I cried, how the horses ran away, how her bridle was burst, how I lost my crupper with many things of worthy memory, which now shall die in oblivion, and thou returned unexperienced to thy grave. By this reckoning, he is more shrew than she. Aye, and that thou and the proudest of you all shall find when he comes home. But what talk I this? 
Call forth Nathaniel, Joseph, Nicholas, Philip, Walter, Sugar Shop, and the rest. Let the heads be slickly combed, their blue coats brushed, and their garters of an indifferent knit. Let them curtsy with their left legs, and not presume to touch a hair of my master's horse tail till they kiss their hands. Are they all ready? They are. Call them forth. Here, here, ho! You must meet my master to countenance my mistress. Well, I shall have the face of her own. Well, who knows not that? Though it seems the cause for company to countenance her. I call them forth to, to credit her. Why, well, she comes to borrow nothing of them. Welcome out, Romeo. Oh, 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 Welcome you, how now you, what you, fellow you, and thus much for greeting. Now, my spruce companions, is all ready and all things neat. All things is ready. How near is our master? In at hand, alighted by this, and therefore be... Ah! Fox Pesters, I hear my master. Where be these knaves? What? No man of door to hold my stirrup, not to take my horse? Where's the valley of Gregory Philip? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You lock headed and unpolished grooms. What? No attendance, no regard, no duty. Where's the foolish name I said before? Yes, sir. As foolish as I was before. You peasant swain, you horse and maltos drudge. Did I not bid thee meet me in the park and bring along these rascal days with thee? Uh, Nathaniel's coat, were, sir, was not fully made, uh, uh, and Gabriel's pumps were all unpinked in the heel. Uh, there was no link to colour Peter's hat, and Walter's dagger was not come from sheathing. There was none fine but Adam, Ralph, and Gregory. Oh. The rest were ragged, old, and beggarly. Yet, as they are, here they are come to meet you. Go, rascals, go and fetch my supper in. Oh. Where is the life that led I led? Where are those? Sit down, Kay. Mm. Sit down and welcome. <laughs> food, 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 food. Mm. Why, what I say? Oh. Nay, good sweet Kay, be merry. Oh. Off with my boots, you rogues. You villains, when? Yes. It was the friar of orders, grey as he for the... Oh! You rogue, you pluck my foot awry. Take that! Yeah! And mend the plucking of the other. Yes, sir. Be merry, Kate. Some water, hope. What hope? Sir. Where's my spaniel, Troilus? Sirrah, get you hence and... And bid my cousin Ferdinand come hither. One, Kate, that you must kiss and be acquainted with. Yes, sir. Where are my slippers? Shall I have some water? Master. Come, Kate. And wash. And welcome heartily. Oh. You horse and villain, will you let it fall? Patience, I pray you, it was a fault unwilling. A horse and beetle-headed, flap-eared knave. Come, Kate, sit down. I know you have a stomach. Will you give thanks, sweet Kate, or else shall I? What's this? Mutton. I. Who brought it? I. Tis burnt. And so is all the meat. What dogs are these? Where is the rascal cook? How durst you villains bring it from the dresser and serve it thus to me that love it not? There, take it to you, trenches, cups and all! Oh. You heedless jolt heads and unmannered slaves. What? Do you grumble? I'll be with you straight! I pray you, husband, be not so disquiet. The meat was well if you were so contented. I tell thee, Kate, it was burnt and dried away. And I expressly am forbid to touch it, for it engenders choler, planteth anger. And better twere that both of us did fast, since of ourselves ourselves are choleric than feed it with such over-roasted flesh. Be patient. Tomorrow it shall be mended, and for this night we'll fast for company. Come, I'll bring thee to thy bridal chamber. Is he? Peter, didn't ever see the like? He kills her in her own humour. Where is he? In her chamber, making a sermon of continency to her, and rails and swears and rates that she, poor soul, knows not which way to stand, to look, to speak, and sits as one new risen from a dream. Away, away, for he's coming hither. Uh, thus have I politically begun my reign, and tis my hope to end successfully. My falcon now is sharp and passing empty. Until she stoops, she must not be full gorged, for then she never looks upon her lure. Another way I have to man my haggard, to make her come and know her keeper's call, that is to watch her, as we watch these kites that bait and beat and will not be obedient. <laughs> she had no meat today, nor none shall eat. Last night she slept not, <laughs> nor tonight she shall not. As with the meat, some undeserved fault I'll find about the making of the bed, and here I'll fling the pillow, there the bolster, this way the coverlet, another way the sheets, I, and amid this hurley, I'll intend that all is done in reverent care of her. And in conclusion, she shall watch all night. And if she chance to nod, I'll rail and brawl and with the clamor keep her still awake. This is a way to kill a wife with kindness. And thus I'll curb her mad and headstrong humor. 
He that knows better how to tame a shrew, now let him speak. <laughs> Tis charity to show. Friend Licio, that Mr. Spianca doth fancy any other but Lucentio? I tell you, sir, she bears me fair in hand. Sir, to satisfy you in what I have said, stand by and mark the manner of his teaching. Now, mistress, profit you in what you read? What master read you? First resolve me that. I read that I profess the art to love. And may you prove, sir, master of your art. While you, sweet dear, prove mistress of my heart. Proceed as marry. Now tell me, I pray you, that durst swear that your mistress Bianca loved none in the world so well as Lucentio. Oh, despiteful love! Unconstant womankind! <laughs> I tell thee, Licio, this is wonderful! Mistake no more. I am not Licio, nor a musician as I seem to be, but one that scorns to live in this disguise for such a one as leaves a gentleman and makes a god of such a cullion. Know, sir, that I am called Hortensio. Signor Hortensio? I have often heard of your entire affection to Bianca. And since mine eyes are witness of her likeness, I will with you, if you be so contented, forswear Bianca and her love forever. Faith, mistress, I see how they kiss and court. Oh, oh. Signor Lucentio, here is my hand, and here I firmly vow never to woo her more, but do forswear her, as one unworthy all the former favours that I have fondly flattered her withal. And here I take the like unfeigned oath, never to marry with her, though she would entreat. <laughs> Oh, fie on her! See how beastly she doth court him. Would all the world but he had quite forsworn. For me, that I may surely keep mine oath, I will be married to a wealthy widow ere three days pass, which hath as long loved me as I have loved this proud, disdainful haggard. And so farewell, Signor Lucentio. Kindness in women, not their beauteous look, shall win my love, and so I take my leave in resolution as I swore before. <laughs> Mistress Bianca, bless you with such grace as longeth to a lover's blessed case. Oh. Nay, I have taken you napping gentle love, and have forsworn you with Hortensio. Oh, Tranio, you jest. But have you both forsworn me? Mistress, we have. Then we are rid of Licio. If Aethi, I have a lusty widow now that shall be wooed and wedded in a day. <laughs> God give him joy. Ah, and he'll tame her. He says so, Tranio. Faith, he's gone into the taming school. The taming school? What is there such a place? Why, well, I'm mistress, and Petruchio is the master that teaches tricks eleven and twenty long to tame a shrew and charm her chattering tongue. <laughs> oh, master, master, I've watched so long that I'm dog-weary, but at last I spied an ancient angel coming down the hill will serve the turn. What is he, Biandello? Uh, master, a mercantant or a pedant, I know not what, but formal in apparel, in gait and countenance, surely like a father. And what of him, Tranio? If he be credulous and trust my tale, I'll make him glad to seem Vincentio and give assurance to Baptista Minella as if he were the right Vincentio. Take in your love and then let me alone. God save you, sir. And you, sir. You are welcome. Travel you far on or are you at the farthest? Sir, at the farthest for a week or two, but then up farther and as far as Rome. And so to Tripoli, if God lend me life. What countryman, I pray? Of Mantua. Of Mantua? Sir, Mary, God forbid! And come to Padua, careless of your life? My life, sir? How I pray, for that goes hard. Tis death for anyone in Mantua to come to Padua. What? Know you not the cause? Your ships are stayed in Venice, and the Duke, for private quarrel twixt your Duke and him, hath published and proclaimed it openly. <sighs> Tis marvel, but that you were but newly come, you might have heard it else proclaimed about. Alas, sir, it is worse for me than so. For I have bills for money by exchange from Florence, and must here deliver them. Well, sir, uh, to do you courtesy, this will I do, and this I will advise you. First, tell me, have you ever been at Pisa? Aye, sir, in Pisa have I often been. Pisa, renowned for grave citizens. Among them, know you one Vincentio? Oh, I know him not, but I have heard of him. A merchant of incomparable wealth. Well, he is my father, sir, and sooth to say, in countenance, somewhat doth resemble you. Uh, much as an apple duff and oyster in all words. To save your life in this extremity, this favour will I do you for his sake. And think it not the worst of all your fortunes that you are like to serve Vincentio. His name and credit shall you undertake, and in my house you shall be friendly lodged. 
Look that you take upon you as you should. You understand me, sir? Oh. So shall you stay till you have done your business in the city. Nay, I... If this be courtesy, sir, accept of it. Oh, sir, I do, and will repute you ever the patron of my life and liberty. Then go with me to make the matter good. Uh, this, by the way, I let you understand. My father is here looked for every day to pass assurance of a dower in marriage twixt me and one Baptista's daughter here. In all these circumstances, I'll instruct you. Go with me to clothe you as becomes you. <laughs> Forsooth, I dare not for my life. The more my wrong, the more his spite appears. What, did he marry me to famish me? Beggars that come unto my father's door upon entreaty have a present arms. If not elsewhere, they meet with charity. But I, who never knew how to entreat, nor never needed that I should entreat, am starved for meat, giddy for lack of sleep, with oaths kept waking and with brawling fed. And that which spites me more than all these wants, he does it under name of perfect love. As who should say if I should sleep or eat to a deadly sickness or else present death? I prithee go and get me some repast. I care not what, so it be wholesome food. What say you to a neat's foot? It is passing good. I prithee let me have it. Uh, I fear it is too choleric a meat. Oh. Uh, how say you to a fat tripe finely broiled? I like it well, good groom. You'll fetch it me. Mm. I cannot tell. I fear it is choleric. Oh. What say you to a piece of beef and mustard? A dish that I do love to feed upon. Aye, but the mustard is too hot a little. Why then the beef and let the mustard rest? Nay, then I will not. You shall have the mustard or else you get no beef or groomier. Then both or one or anything thou wilt. Why, then the mustard will have the beef. Go, get thee gone, oh. thou false deluding slave oh. that feeds me with the very name of meat. Sorrow oh. on thee and all the pack of you that triumph us upon my misery. Oh. Go, get thee gone, oh. I say. How fares my case? No. <sighs> What, sweeting, all aboard? Mistress, what cheer? Saith as cold as can be. Pluck up thy spirits. Look cheerfully upon me. Here, love, thou seest how diligent I am to dress thy meat myself and bring it thee. Oh. I am sure, sweet Kate, such kindness merits thanks. What, not a word? Nay, then, thou lovest it not, and all my pains is sorted to no proof. Here, take away the dish. I pray you let it stand. The poorest service is repaid with thanks, and so shall mine before you touch the meat. I thank you, sir. Signor Petruchio, fie, you are to blame. Come, Mistress Kate, I'll bear you company. Eat it up all, Hortensio, if thou lovest me. Much good do it unto thy gentle heart. Kate, eat apace. And now, my honey love, will we return unto thy father's house, and revel it as bravely as the best, with silken coats and caps and golden rings, with ruffs and cuffs and farthingales and things, with scarves and fans and double change of bravery, with amber bracelets, beads, and all this knavery. What? Hast thou dined? Oh. The tailor stays thy leisure to deck thy body with his ruffling treasure. Come, tailor, let's see these ornaments. Lay forth the gown. What news with you, sir? Here is the cat, your worship, to bespeak. Why, this was moulded on a porringer, a velvet dish. Five white is lewd and filthy, white as a cockle or a walnut shell. A knack, a toy, a trick, a baby's cap, away with it. Come, let me have a bigger. I'll have no bigger. This doth fit the time, and gentlewomen wear such caps as these. When you are gentle, you shall have one too, and not till then. That will not be in haste. Why, sir, I trust I may have leave to speak. And speak I will. I am no child, no babe. Your betters have endured me, say my mind, and if you cannot, best you stop your ears. My tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart concealing it will break. And rather than it shall, I will be free, even to the uttermost as I please in words. Why, thou sayest true, it is a paltry cap, a custard coffin, a bauble, a silken pie. I love thee well, in that thou likest it not. Love me or love me not, I like the cap, and it I will have or I will have none. Thy gown? Why, I come, tailor, let's see it. Mercy God, what masking stuff is here. What's this? A sleeve? Tis like a demi-cannon. What? Up and down, carved like an apple tart. Here, snip and nip and cut, slits and slash. Like to a censor in a barbershop. What the devil's name, Taylor, calls thou this? I see she's like to have neither cap nor gown. You bid me make it orderly and well, according to the fashion and the time. Marion did, but if you be remembered, I did not bid you mar it to the time. Go, hop me over every kennel home, for you shall hop without my custom, sir. I'll none of it. Hence, make your best of it. I never saw a better-fashioned gown. 
More quaint, more pleasing, nor more commendable. Well, like you mean to make a puppet of me. Why, true. He means to make a puppet of thee. <laughs> she says your worship means to make a puppet of her. Oh, monstrous arrogance. Oh. Thou liest. Thou thread, thou thimble, thou yard, three quarters, half yard, quarter, nail, thou flea, thou knit, thou winter cricket, thou braved in mine own house with a skein of thread. Away, thou rag, thou quantity, thou remnant, or I shall so bemeet thee with thy yard as thou shalt think on plating whilst thou livest. I tell thee, I, that thou hast marred her gown. Your worship is deceived. The gown is made just as my master had direction. Grumio gave order how it should be done. I gave him no order, I gave him the stuff. But how did you desire it should be made? Marry, sir, with needle and thread. Oh, but did you not request to have it cut? Thou hast faced many things. I have. Face not me. Hm. Thou hast braved many men. Brave not me. Oh. I will neither be faced nor braved. I say unto thee, I bid thy master cut out the gown, but I did not bid him cut it to pieces. Ergo, thou lies. Why, here is the note of the fashion to testify. Read it. The note lies in throat if you say I said so. In promise, a loose bodied gown. Master, if ever I said loose bodied gown, sew me in the skirts of it and beat me to death with the bottom of brown thread. I said a gown. Proceed. With a small compassed cape. I confess the cape. With a trunk sleeve. I confess two sleeves. The sleeves curiously cut. Aye, there's the Error the bill, sir. Error the bill. I command that the sleeves should be cut out and sewed up again. And that I'll prove upon thee that our little finger be armed in a thimble. This is true that I say. Oh, and I have him place where thou shouldst know it. I am for thee straight. Oh. Take thou the bill, give me the meat yard, and spare not me. Put a mercy, Grumio, then it shall have no odd. Well, sir, in brief, the guard is not for me. You are the right, sir, tis for my mistress. Go take it up unto thy master's use. Villain, not for thy life. Take up my mistress' gown for thy master's use. Why, sir, what's your conceit in that? Oh, sir, the conceit is deeper than you think for. Take up my mistress' gown to his master's use. Oh, fie, fie, fie. Hortensio, say thou will see the tailor paid. Go take it, hands be gone, and say no more. Oh. Take, I'll pay thee for thy gown tomorrow. Take no unkindness of his hasty words away, I say. Commend me to thy master. Well, come, my Kate. We will unto your fathers, even in these honest mean habiliments. Our purses shall be proud, our garments poor. For tis the mind that makes the body rich. And as the sun breaks through the darkest clouds, so honour peereth in the meanest habit. What, is the jay more precious than the lark because his feathers are more beautiful? Or is the adder better than the eel because his painted skin contents the eye? Oh no, good Kate, neither art thou the worse for this poor furniture and mean array. If thou accountst it shame, lay it on me, and therefore frolic. We will henceforth with to feast and sport us at thy father's house. Go, call my men, and let us straight to him, and bring our horses unto Long Lane End. There will we mount, and thither walk on foot. Let's see, I think tis now some seven o'clock, and well, we may come there by dinner time. I dare assure you, sir, it is almost two, and it will be supper time ere you come it there. It shall be seven ere I go to horse. Look what I speak or do or think to do. You are still crossing it. Sirs, let's alone. I will not go today. Oh. And ere I do, it shall be what o'clock I say it is. Why, so this gallant will command the sun. <laughs> Sir, this is the house. Please it you that I call. I what else? Uh, but I be deceived. Senior Baptist may remember me near twenty years ago in Genoa, where we were lodgers at the Pegasus. Tis well, and hold your own in any case with such austerity as longeth to a father. I warrant you. But, sir, here comes your boy to a good he was schooled. Fear you not him. Sir Abiandello? Sir? Now do your duty thoroughly, I advise you. Imagine twere the right Vincentio. Tat, fear not me. But hast thou done thy errand to Baptista? I told him that your father was at Venice and that you looked for him this day in Padua. Not at all, fellow. Hold thee that to drink. Ah. Here comes Baptista. Oh. Set your countenance, sir. Good morrow, sir. Good morrow. Signor <laughs> Baptista, you were happily met. Ah. Sir, this is the gentleman I told you of. I pray you stand good father to me now. Give me Bianca for my patrimony. Soft, son. Sir, by your leave. Having come to Padua to gather in some debts, my son, Lucentio, made me acquainted with a weighty cause of love between your daughter and himself. And for the good report I hear of you, and for the love he beareth to your daughter and she to him, to stay him not too long, I am content in a good father's care to have him matched. And if you please to like no worse than I, upon some agreement me shall you find ready and willing with one consent to have her so bestowed. For curious I cannot be with you, Signor Baptista, of whom I hear so well. Oh, 
sir, pardon me in what I have to say. Your plainness and your shortness please me well. Right, true it is, your son Lucentio here doth love my daughter, and she loveth him, or both dissemble deeply their affections. And therefore, if you say no more than this, that like a father you will deal with him, and pass my daughter a sufficient dower, the match is made, and all is done. Your son shall have my daughter with consent. I thank you, sir. Where then do you know best we be a fide and such assurance ten as shall with either part's agreement stand? Not in my house, Lucentia. You know, pitchers have ears, and I have many servants besides old Gremio is heartening still, and happily we might be interrupted. Then at my lodging, it like you, there doth my father lie, and there this night we'll pass the business privately and well. Send for your daughter by your servant here. My boy shall fetch the scrivener presently. The worst is this, that at so slender warning you are like to have a thin and slender pittance. It likes me well. Cambio, hire you home and bid be anchor, make her ready straight. And if you will tell what hath happened, Lucentio's father is arrived in Padua, and how she's like to be Lucentio's wife. I pray the gods she may, with all my heart. Dally not with the gods, but get thee gone. A Signor Baptista, shall I lead the way? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> One mess is like to be your cheer. <laughs> Come, sir. We will better it in Pisa. I follow you. Cambio. What says thou, Biandello? You saw my master wink and laugh upon you? Biandello, what of that? Oh, faith, nothing. But he has left me here behind to expound the meaning or moral of his signs and tokens. I pray thee, moralize them. Uh, then thus, Baptista is safe talking with the deceiving father of a deceitful son. And what of him? His daughter is to be brought by you to the supper. And then? The old priest at St. Luke's Church is at your command at all hours. And what of all this? I cannot tell, except while they are busy about a counterfeit assurance, take you assurance of her. Come privilegio ed imprimendum solum. <laughs> to the church, take the priest clerk and some sufficient honest witnesses. But Biandello, uh, if this be not what you look for, I have no more to say. But bid Bianca, farewell forever and a day. Here is I cannot tarry. I knew a wench married in an afternoon as she went to the garden for parsley to stuff a rabbit. <laughs> and so may you, sir. <laughs> and so are you, sir. My master hath appointed me to go to St. Luke's to bid the priest be ready to come against you. Come with your appendix. I may and will, if she be so contented. She will be pleased, then wherefore should I doubt? Hap what hap may I roundly go about her. It shall go hard if Cambio go without her. Come on, a God's name, once more toward our fathers. Good Lord, how bright and goodly shines the moon. The moon? The sun? It is not moonlight now. I say it is the moon that shines so bright. I know it is the sun that shines so bright. Now, by my mother's sun, and that's myself, it shall be moon, or star, or what I list, or ere I journey to your father's house. Go on, fetch our horses back again. Oh. Ever more crossed and crossed. Nothing but cross. Say as he says, or we shall never go. For what I pray, since we have come so far, and be it moon, or sun, or what you please, and if you please to call it a rush candle, henceforth I vow it shall be so for me. I say it is the moon. I know it is the moon. Nay, then you lie. It is the blessed sun. And then, God be blessed, it is the blessed sun. But, but sun it is not when you say it is not. And the moon changes even as your mind. What you will have it named, even that it is. And so it shall be so for Catherine. Petruchio, go thy ways. The field is won. Well, forward, forward. Thus the bow should run. And not unluckily against the bias. But stop, what company is coming here? Good morrow, sir. Good morrow, gentle mistress. Where away? What? Tell me, sweet Kate, and tell me truly too, hast thou beheld a fresher gentlewoman? Oh. Such war of white and red within her cheeks. What stars do spangle heaven with such beauty as those two eyes become that heavenly face? Fair, lovely maid, once more, good day to thee. Sweet Kate, embrace her for her beauty's sake. I will make the man mad to make a woman of him. A young, budding virgin. Fair and fresh and sweet. Whither away or whither is thy abode? Happy the parents of so fair a child. Well, Happier the man whom favourable stars allot thee for his lovely better. <laughs> Why, how now, Kate, I hope thou art not mad. This is a man. No. Old, wrinkled, faded, withered, and not a maiden, as thou says he is. Pardon, old father. My mistaking eyes that have been so bedazzled with the sun uh, that everything I look on seemeth green. 
Now I perceive thou art a reverend father. Pardon, I pray thee, for my mad mistake. Do, good old grandsire, and withal make known which way thou travellest. If along with us, we shall be joyful of thy company. Fair sir, and you, my merry mistress, that with your strange encounter much amaze me. My name is called Vincentio, my dwelling Pisa. And bound I am to Padua, there to visit a son of mine, which long I have not seen. What is his name? Lucentio, gentle sir. Happily met! The happier for thy son. And now by law, as well as reverend age, I may entitle thee my loving father. The sister to my wife, this gentlewoman, thy son by this has married. Oh. Now, wonder not, nor be not grieved. She is of good esteem, her dowry wealthy and of worthy birth. Beside, so qualified as may beseem the spouse of any noble gentleman. Let me embrace with old Vincentio, and wonder we to see thy honest son, who will at thy arrival be full joyous. But is this true, or is it else your pleasure, like pleasant travellers, to break a jest upon the company you overtake? I do assure thee, father, so it is. Come, go along and see the truth hereof, for our first merriment hath made thee jealous. Well, Petruchio, this has put me in heart. Have to my widow, and if she be fraud, then hast thou taught Hortensio to be untoward. <laughs> and swiftly, sir, for the priest is ready. I fly, Biondello, but they may chance to need thee at home, therefore leave us. Leave us, Biondello. Nay, faith, I'll see the church of your back, and then come back to my master as soon as I can. I marvel Cambio comes not all this while. Sir, here's the door. This is Lucentio's house. My father's bears more toward the marketplace. Thither must I, and here I leave you, sir. You shall not choose but drink before you go. I think I shall command your welcome here. <laughs> and by all likelihood, some chair is to all. They are busy within. You were best knock louder. Well, won't he that knocks as he would beat down the gate? Is Signor Lucentio within, sir? <laughs> He's within, sir, but not to be spoken with all. What if a man bring him a hundred pound or two to make merry with all? Keep your hundred pounds to yourself. He shall need none so long as I live. Nay, I told you your son was well beloved in Padua. Do you hear, sir? To leave frivolous circumstances, I pray you tell Signor Lucentio that his father has come from Pisa and is here at the door to speak with him. Thou liest! His father is come from Padua and here looking out at the window. Art thou his father? <laughs> Aye, sir. So his mother says, if I may believe her. What? Why, how now, gentlemen? Why, this is flat knavery to take upon you another man's name. Lay hands on the villain. I believe her means to cousin somebody in this city under my countenance. I've seen him in the church together. God send a good ship in her. But who is here? Ah. My old master Vincentio. Now we are undone and brought to nothing. Come hither, crack hemp. Uh, I hope I may choose, sir. Come hither, you rogue. What, have you forgot me? Uh, forgot you? Uh, no, sir. No, I could not forget you, for I never saw you before in all my life. What, you notorious villain, didst thou never see thy master's father, Vincentio? What, my old worshipful old master? Yes, marry, sir, see when he looks out of the window. Is so indeed. Oh, help! Uh, help! 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 Oh, what are you that offer to beat my servant? What am I, sir? Nay, what are you, sir? Oh, immortal God, so fine villain! A silken doublet, a velvet hose, a scarlet cloak and a copper in hat! Oh, I am undone, I am undone! While I play the good husband at home, my son and my servant spend all of the universe in How here. now? What's the matter? What is the matter? The lunatic? Sir, you seem a sober ancient gentleman by your habit, but your words show you were a madman. Why, sir, what sounds did you if I wear pearl and gold? I thank my good father, I am able to maintain it. My father, oh villain, he is a sailmaker in Bergamo. Oh, you mistake, what? sir, you mistake, sir. Pray, what do you think's his name? His name? As if I knew not his name. I have brought him up ever since he was three years old, and his name is Tarnio. Away, away, oh, mad oh, his name is Lucentio, oh, and he is mine only son and heir to the lands of me, Signor Vincentio. Oh, he hath murdered his master. Lay hold on him, I charge you with the Duke's name. Oh, my son, my son. Tell me, thou villain, where is my son, Lucentio? Call for an officer. Tell me this man's name to the jail. The father Baptista. 
I told you, see the deep beef bomb coming! Harry me to the tail! Stop, officer! He shall not go to prison! Talk not, Senor Gremio! I say he shall go to prison! Take heed, Senor Baptista, lest you be cony catched in this business. I dare swear this is the right Vincentio! Swear if thou darest! Uh, nay, I dare not swear it. Then I will best say that I am not Lucentio! Yes, I know thee to be Senor Lucentio! Away with the dota to the jail! What oh, oh, strangers may be hailed and abused! Who wants to fill him? Oh, we are spoiled, and younger he is, Master. Deny him, forswear him, or else we are all undone. Hold! Hold! Pardon, sweet father. Lives my sweetest son. Pardon, dear father. How hast thou offended? Where is Lucentio? Here's Lucentio, right son to the right Vincentio, that have by marriage made thy daughter mine, while counterfeit supposes bleared thine eye. Here's packing with a witness to deceive us all. Where is that damned villain Tranio that faced and braved me in this matter so? Why, tell me, is not this my cambio? Cambio is changed into Lucentio. Oh. Love wrought these miracles. Uh. Bianca's love made me exchange my state with Tranio while he did bear my countenance in the town. And happily I have arrived at last unto the wished haven of my bliss. What Tranio did, myself enforced him to. Then pardon him, sweet father, for my sake. I'll slit the villain's nose that would have sent me to the jail. Do you hear, sir? Have you married my daughter without asking my goodwill? Fear not, Baptista, we will content you, go to. But I will in to be revenged for this villainy. I sound the depth of this knavery. Look not pale, Bianca, thy father will not frown. My cake is dough, but I'll in among the rest, out of hope of all. But my share of the feast... Husband, let's follow to see the end of this ado. First kiss me, Kate, and we will. What, in the midst of the street? What? Art thou ashamed of me? No, sir, God forbid, but ashamed to kiss. Why, then, let's home again. Oh. Come, sir, let's away. Nay, I will give thee a kiss. Now, pray thee, love, stay. Is not this well? Come, my sweet Kate. Better once than never. For never too late. <laughs> At last, though long, our jarring notes agree. And time it is when raging war is done to smile at scapes and perils overblown. My fair Bianca, bid my father welcome, while I with self-same kindness welcome thine. Brother Petruchio, Sister Caterina, and thou, Hortensio, with thy loving widow. Feast with the best and welcome to my house. My banquet is to close our stomachs up after our great good cheer. Pray you sit down, for now we sit to chat as well as eat. Nothing but sit and sit and eat and eat. Padua affords this kindness, son, Petruchio. Padua affords nothing but what is kind. For both our sakes, I would that word were true. Now, for my life, Hortensio fears his widow. Then never trust me if I be a fear. You are very sensible, and yet you miss my sense. I mean, Hortensio is afeard of you. He that is giddy thinks the world turns round. Roundly replied. Mistress, how mean you that? Well, thus I conceive by him. Conceives by me? How likes Hortensio that? My <laughs> widow says that she conceives her tale. Very well mended. Kiss in for that, good widow. He that is giddy thinks the world turns round. I pray you tell me what you meant by that. Your husband, being troubled with a shrew, measures my husband's sorrow by his woe. And now you know my meaning. A very mean meaning. Right, I mean you. And I am mean indeed, respecting you. To her, Kate. To her. <laughs> a hundred marks, my Kate has put her down. That's my office. But like an officer. Have to the lad. I like Grimio, these quick-witted folks. Believe me, sir, they butt together well. Uh. Head and butt a hasty-witted body would say your head and butt were head and horn. I, oh. Miss Wardbride, have that awakened you. Aye, but not frighted me. <laughs> Therefore, I'll sleep again. Nay, that you shall not, since you had begun. Have it you for a better jest or two. Am I your bird? I mean to shift my bush. Oh, and then pursue me as you draw your bow. <laughs> You're welcome all. She hath prevented me. Here, Signor Tranio, this bird you aimed at, though you hit her not. Therefore, a health to all the shot and miss. Oh, oh sir. Lucentio slipped me like his greyhound, which runs himself and catches for his master. A good, oh, swift simile, but something courage. Tis well, so that you hunted for yourself. Tis thought your dear does hold you at a bay. Oh, Petruchio, oh. Tranio hits you now. I Ooh. thank thee for that gird, good Tranio. <laughs> confess, confess, hath he not hit you here? I has a little gold, me, I confess. <laughs> and as the jest did glance away from me, tis ten to one, it maimed you two, I right. Now, in good sadness, son Petruchio, I think thou hast the very shrew of all. <laughs> well, I say no. Oh? And therefore, for assurance, let each one send unto his wife. And he whose wife is most obedient to come at first when he doth send for her, 
shall win the wager which we will propose. Oh. Tent, what's the wager? Uh, 20 crowns. 20 crowns? I'll venture so much of my hawk or hound, but 20 times so much upon my wife. A hundred then. Content. A match, tis done. Oh. Who shall begin? That will I. Go, Biondello. Bid your mistress come to me. I'll go. Son, I'll be your half, Bianca, come. I'll have no halves, I'll bear it all myself. Oh. <laughs> and now? What news? Sir, my mistress sends you word that she is busy and she cannot come. Oh, oh she is busy and she cannot come. Is that an answer? Ah, and a kind one, too. Pray God say your wife sends you not a word. I hope better. <laughs> Sit with me, Adela. Go and entreat my wife to come to me forthwith. Oh, entreat her. Oh, hey, then she must needs come. Uh, I'm afraid, sir, do what you can. Yours will not be entreated. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's my wife? She says you have some goodly jest in hand. She will not come. She bids you come to her. Oh, <laughs> and worse, she will not come. Oh, vile, intolerable, not to be endured. Sir Gromeo, <sighs> go to your mistress. Say I command her come to me. Oh, I know her answer. What? She will not. The fouler fortune mine, and there an end. <sighs> no. Why not hold it up? Here comes Katharina. What is your will, sir, that you send for me? Where is your sister and Hortensio's wife? They sit conferring by the parlour fire. Go, fetch them hither. If they deny to come, swinge with them soundly forth unto their husbands. Away, I say, and bring them hither straight. Here is a wonder, if you talk of a wonder. And so it is, I wonder what it bodes. Marry, peace it bodes. And love, and quiet life. An awful rule and right supremacy. And to be short, what not, that sweet and happy. Now, fair before the good Petruchio, the wages are as one. And I will add unto their losses 20,000 crowns, another dowry to another daughter. For she is changed as she had never been. Nay, I will win my wager better yet, and show more sign of her obedience, her new-built virtue and obedience. See where she comes, and brings your froward wives as prisoners to her womanly persuasion. Catherine, that cap of yours becomes you not. Off with that bauble, throw it underfoot. Oh, let me never have a cause to sigh till I be brought to such a silly pass. Fie, what a foolish duty call you this. I would your duty were as foolish too. The wisdom of your duty, fair Bianca, hath cost me an hundred crowns since supper time. The more fool you for laying on my duty. Catherine. Oh. I charge thee, tell these headstrong women what duty they do owe their lords and husbands. Oh, come, come, you're mocking. We will have no telling. Come on, I say, and first begin with her. She shall not. I say she shall, and first begin with her. Oh, fie, fie. Unknit that threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It blots thy beauty as frosts do bite the meads, confounds thy fame as whirlwinds shake fair buds, and in no sense is meet or amiable. A woman moved is like a fountain troubled, muddy, ill-seeming, thick, bereft of beauty, and while it is so, none so dry or thirsty will deign to sip or touch one drop of it. But thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign. One that cares for thee and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor both by sea and land, to watch the night in storms, the day in cold, whilst thou liest warm at home, secure and safe, and craves no other tribute at thy hands but love, fair looks, and true obedience, too little payment for so great a debt. Such duty as the subject owes the prince. Even such a woman oweth to her husband. And when she's froward, peevish, sullen, sour, and not obedient to his honest will, what is she but a foul contending rebel and graceless traitor to her loving lord? I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war where they should kneel for peace or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Why are our bodies soft and weak and smooth, unapt to toil and trouble in the world, but that our soft conditions and our hearts should well agree with our external parts? Come, come, you froward and unable worms. My mind hath been as big as one of yours, my heart as great, my reason haply more, to bandy word for word and frown for frown. <laughs> but now I see our lances are but straws. Our strength as weak, our weakness past compare, that seeming to be most 
which we indeed least are, there unveil your stomachs, for it is no boot, and place your hands below your husband's foot, in token of which duty, if he please, my hand is ready. May it do him ease. Why, there's a wench. Come on and kiss me, Kate. Well, go thy ways, old lad. For thou shalt had. Tis a good hearing when children are to war. But a harsh hearing when women are flowers. Come, Kate, wheel to bed. We three are married, but you two are sped. Twas I won the wager, though you hit the white. And being a winner, God give you good night. Now go thy ways, thou hast tamed a cursed true. Tis a wonder by your leave she will be tamed so. Oh.